This video is brought to you by my buds at Commonwealth Press. Contact them at cwpress.com for all of your t-shirt and printing needs. Hey, what's that? You need a sticker printed for your business? For your little league team? Oh, they could do that too. You don't have a design or logo? Oh, boy. Go over to cwpress.com, tell them you need one, tell them John Bear is your bud. Just go over to cwpress.com. Welcome back there, buds. Next up on the bench, behind me here, is that blonde, finished, Lane Cedar Chest. I'm sure we have all came across a few of these pieces in our day. That just lovely, disgusting, blonde, <laughs> mid-century modern finish that's borderline paint and I don't like it. Luckily, the client doesn't like it either. So we're going to remove all of that, give it a nice, fresh, updated look. I think we'll do a little bit of lighter finish with some of those uh, accent trim pieces, maybe darker. We're just going to see how it goes. But let's just get in here, take a closer look see the damage we're working with, and get to stripping. Here's one interesting little fact about cedar chests I never knew. This sticker is inside that bottom drawer and it says that the aroma from the cedar chest, even though it keeps moths away, it can uh, damage rubber, metals, and dissolve printer ink. I don't know how up-to-date any of this is if that still holds true but uh yeah they put this drawer in the bottom made from a different material here looks like oak and that'll keep your valuables nice and intact now that i got everything apart it's my favorite part <laughs> i usually like to just hit the top first just to see what i'm working with and I'll typically will strip this. This is a veneer. So I can't really necessarily scrape it or sand it. I don't want to risk burning through any more than I have to. So with something like this, I will use the stripper. As always, brushing it on. Very thick.
Here's a little tip of the day for you buds. You can just brush that stripper right over that where the hardware holes are. If you just put a little bit of tape under there where the hardware holes are, it'll save you all kinds of headaches and cleanup. The last step in this stripping process is just to take a scuff pad with some lacquer thinner and scrub off any remaining finish or residue from the stripper and keep wiping, wiping, wiping with that scuff pad and lots of rags. One last little stripper tipper for you, especially if you are new to this channel. I always like to use this little sawdust trick that my old bud from Slovenia taught me. One of the first shops that I ever worked at, he had all kinds of tricks up his sleeve and this was one of the ones that I was most impressed with. And it works like a charm, you just want to make sure that you don't brush too hard or you could damage that wood, but it cleans up. Everything out of crevices that you really couldn't get with a scraper or sanding saves a lot of time. It really does the trick. After stripping, I went around all four legs and over the whole piece, and I just repaired and re-glued anything that may have been loose and addressed all those issues after stripping and before sanding. Next, I needed to address this broken trim piece. I chose a two-part wood filler instead of just replacing it with wood, since I will be using a dark stain and it will blend in easily. I begin here just by taping it off so I don't get that filler on any other part of the piece that would require more work getting that off. So I just tape it off and then we'll put the filler in.
The trick here is to get this shaped with a razor knife before this is fully set up and cured. At this point it is still pretty soft and tacky and easily carved. The next thing on the to-do list is to replace the felt from the bottom drawer. And to do this, I will just scrape it off here with a chisel, a scraper, and a sander. And we'll get some new felt on there. And I chose a black felt. I thought that would complement the piece a little bit better than this green. It just screams, I'm a pool table from the 1970s. When I slid this down in, it did bunch up a little bit on some of the corners, so I just had to push that in then with a putty knife. Once I got the drawer all put back together, the next step would be to make a new drawer runner. I cut out these two pieces just from old scrap oak I had laying around, and then we're going to get these glued together and get that into the piece.
I'm sure you're probably wondering how I knew exactly where to put it, and that is because I dry fit it first and made some pencil markings exactly where that should be for that drawer to go in nice and smooth. One last thing that I needed to address was that missing lock piece. And I came up with this idea of how to hide that hole. I just found this little brass. I have no idea what this piece would have been for. I took some super glue and glued the shit out of that. <laughs> so hopefully it doesn't come out anytime soon. Drilled a hole there. I got a little piece in the back. I can just screw it in by hand then. It is a temporary or permanent fix for this problem. And it should look pretty good. Now that all of my ducks are in a row, I'm going to start sanding here. I just picked this half sheet sander up. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. And it is actually made in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My second home. And it is beautiful. It's a beautiful old piece of woodworking machinery that lasted through the years and works as good today as it did probably, I don't know, 50 years ago. I highly recommend that you pick one of these up if you sand a lot, especially like tabletops and things like that. It's going to save you a ton of time. I wouldn't pay the crazy $200 price that some people on Etsy and eBay want, but you can pick one up for under $100, and I highly recommend it. As always, I finish up the machine sanding with hand sanding. Uh, use a block on all the flat surfaces to get it nice and flat and smooth. No ripples or bumps in the piece. And on the sander, I use 150. Here I'm using 150 followed by 220. And that will also get rid of if there's a possibility of any pigtails from the sander. For the front side with all this trim and detail work, I just sanded it all by hand with 150 followed by that 220 to get it nice and smooth like Bucko's belly. Now that everything is finished sanding, it's time to stain. For the stain, I'm using this Verithane Premium Wood Stain. It is uh, close to a gel stain if you're familiar with that. It's a little thicker than your traditional oil-based stain and it dries much faster and it is much more opaque and covers much more so the colors that i chose was this barn red i want a deep dark rich red so we're doing three parts barn red stain to one part kona it's just almost kind of like a very dark walnut and this is just going to produce great color for me Once I got all the stain on this, I thought it all kind of looked a little bit flat and I wanted to give it a little bit more pop, so I decided to give it this one last extra step. I use this brush and I pull some stain from out around those corners and I kind of almost give it a patina look, how you would typically see antiques have that darkening in the inside of edges and trim and things like that so I thought it just added just a little bit of character to it 
just adds that extra little subtlety of an aged antique piece of furniture. And after I get this done, we'll let this stain dry overnight. And there's only one thing that we can do when we're letting that stain dry. Let's get old Buck out there. Are you excited to maybe go for a run? Are you going to run down there? Or turn around, you go this way. Here. You ready? You ready for release? Go get him. Well, buds, we made it through another summer. And now, it seems like it hit fall overnight. It's about 50-some degrees Fahrenheit. It's a beautiful, chilly morning. Time for flannels and hoodies. And no more sweating or bugs or allergies. I'm in heaven. And so is Buck. This is the time when less people come to the trails and Buck can go back to running freely. Gonna pull a hammy, Buck. <laughs> this Marlboro's bud. After letting that stain dry overnight, I start off the finishing process with a healthy coat or two of a lacquer pre-cat vinyl sealer. I also added a little bit of trans tint dye to the sealer give this color just a little bit more depth in color. In between coats, I give it a sand with 400 grit, as well as a fine scuff pad. This provides a beautiful, smoother than Bucko's belly finish. One time in woodworking that you can sand against the grain is when you're sanding sealer. It feels a little bit weird, kind of like when you wade into the ocean to take a pee. As long as you do it sparingly, you're not going to be that weird. So just do it a little bit and it'll be okay. Now I'm spraying a pre-catalyzed lacquer semi-gloss top coat. All that's left to do is let that dry and get that beautiful brass hardware all shined up and everything back together. Well, buds, there we are with another one done. Behind me is probably one of the most beautiful pieces of furniture I've ever had the opportunity to refinish. I can't even believe that it's the same thing. Not to toot my own horn, but I think this one turned out pretty nice. It's very elegant, beautiful. Looks like it could be in a queen's castle. <laughs> so, as always, if you like what you see, just give me a like and a share and a comment. Let me know what you think. And now you can also follow the link in the description, order your very own John Bear shirt or sticker. So until next time, we'll see you buds then and stay safe. Thanks for watching.